We're at the Faldo course at the Emirates Golf Club in Dubai in uh, January, a very nice place to be shooting rules videos at this particular time of year. And we're going to just look here at some of the things uh, regarding dropping out in the golf course. You're going to find there are times when your golf ball is in your hand during the playing of a hole for various reasons. You've got to drop it for whatever reason. Um, we're just going to run through a few of the things that you need to bear in mind when dropping. The first thing is you must uh, drop correctly for the rule that you're proceeding under. It sounds obvious, doesn't it? But uh, if you're taking relief um, from something like a cart path at a golf course like this, you drop it within one club length of um, nearest point of relief. If you're dropping under penalty from somewhere, it's two club lengths. So you've got to know where you're dropping it and it's always wise to mark out that area. It's not compulsory, but it's always wise to mark out so you have points of reference. The second thing to say is that when you drop the ball, it must land within that specified area, not nearer the hole. If the ball touches a part of the course that is nearer the hole, but then even if it then rolls back further away from the hole, you must redrop. There's no penalty for dropping it uh, nearer the hole, but you must redrop to correct the error. Um, when you're dropping, um, some of you will remember that you used to drop over your shoulder like that. That's long since gone. Today you drop at shoulder height, arm's length, standing upright. We've all played with people who have a very interesting interpretation of shoulder height, but to drop correctly, you must drop at shoulder height at arm's length. Um, if you don't, um, with all these dropping things, you must correct the error before proceeding. If you don't redrop to correct the error, you will be penalised one stroke. Just a few final things to round off this video about correct dropping procedures. Um, occasions when you must redrop. One of those is if you drop the ball and it strikes you, either before or after it touches the ground, your equipment, another player, caddy, you must redrop in those circumstances. There's no penalty, but you have to then proceed correctly with a drop where it doesn't touch any of those things. Uh, another one is if you drop the ball and it uh, rolls either out of bounds or onto a putting green, you must redrop then. Uh, also, if your ball is not in a hazard and it rolls into a hazard when you drop, you must redrop. Similarly, if you're dropping in a hazard, taking a drop within a bunker, and it rolls outside the hazard, you must also redrop. Uh, the final one, which I think maybe not so many people are aware of, um, if you drop your ball and it rolls outside two club lengths from where it first strikes a part of the course, then you must redrop. But the ball is allowed to roll up to two club lengths from where it first strikes a part of the course, which means if you're clever, and you drop wisely and the ball behaves as you want it to on landing, you could sometimes end up nearly four clubs away from where it was originally lying if you were taking a penalty drop. And that might be the difference between having a clear shot to the green and not. So knowing the rules there can really be something that works to your advantage. You drop the ball, it lands within the specified area. As long as it doesn't then roll a further two club lengths, uh, beyond a further two club lengths from that point, you're okay to play the ball as long as it's not near the hole. The ball does not have to stay within that two club length uh, measurement. There is a bit of leeway beyond that. So remember that one and you might just save yourself a shot every now and then.